Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we have a special event, we have a special series of YouTube videos um, and this is based on a community event, an online community event and I want to say thank you to Asia Back to School to give me the chance to present the content and also I want to say thank you to uh, the sponsors Race3 and Captain Hyperscale to uh, get to, to sponsor the event and also to give us the possibility to speak for this event and so on. So let's go ahead and talk about me. My name is Hannes Lagler Grüner. I am a lead cloud architect in one of the biggest consulting companies in Austria. Uh, you can see I have my main focus is Microsoft Asia. So I have a lot of experience, a lot of um, certification in Microsoft Asia in different areas. I also have uh, experience in other hyperscalers but this is not the, the, the case from today. Um, then four years right now, I'm a Microsoft MVP and this year I'm also uh, promoted to a double MVP. So I'm now a Microsoft Asia MVP and also a security MVP. You can find me on Twitter, you can find me uh, on, on X, you can find me on YouTube. You can also uh, have a look to my LinkedIn account, to my private blog called cloudblogger.at and you also have the ability to visit my GitHub repositories where you can find scripts and uh, solutions and maybe some other stuff what you, uh, what you will be interested in. Okay, the topic from today is Microsoft Sentinel. Microsoft Sentinel, the SOA component and in this case SOA, the keyword for success. Uh, it's from video type full, so uh, it will take approximately uh, 45 minutes and from video category level 200. So it's not the, the deep dive into uh, SOA, so we will not cover uh, the details about creation, playbooks and so on. Uh, but you get a better overview about why SOA, what, what can you do in Microsoft Sentinel and also what, ability, what, what kind of uh, possibilities do you have to implement automation rules and so on. Okay, so the session agenda from today is, first of all, we will cover the four main capabilities in my, for Microsoft Sentinel. Then we go ahead and uh, compare the new XDR automation investigation versus Sentinel SOA. Then we go ahead and covering uh, security orchestration automation response SOA in Microsoft Sentinel. And at the end, you will get a better overview about the pricing, but SOA will cost when you enable it for Microsoft Sentinel. Okay, so um, the four main capabilities. The four main capabilities are really clear. First of all, collect your data. Collect your data into Microsoft Sentinel and then you can detect, so can you build up your use cases. I always recommend Think about use cases, always think about use cases. What kind of use cases do you want to achieve in Microsoft Sentinel? And then think about what kind of data do we need to uh, create the use cases to build up the use cases in Microsoft Sentinel. Do not ingest all data into your uh, CM system or in Microsoft Sentinel. Always think about what kind of use cases want to uh, achieve and then think about what kind of data do we need to achieve these use cases. Then you have the ability, uh, you have to detect. So detect threats. So you have here uh, different options. You can use uh, predefined analytics rules from the community, from Microsoft or from uh, third party vendors. Or you can create your custom rules, your analytics rules to fulfill your use cases, what you want to achieve. Then investigate, use artificial intelligence. So Microsoft Sentinel have artificial intelligence integrated to uh, help you to detect faster to investigate or you can use Microsoft Security Copilot as the new functionality and I always recommend to use this to uh, investigate what happens in your environment. And at the end, respond rapidly. When something happens in your environment, you have to respond rapidly to identify, to analyze, and to quarantine or block compromised users, for example, devices or whatever. This is really important to respond rapidly. When something happens, 
if you a response really rapidly, um, the attacker have not the chance to uh, get to uh, access to another systems and so on. So why respond rapidly uh, and automate? Why should you do this? So think about your so your your uh, your your environment. Do you think you have enough time when a new incident happens that you respond rapidly to, for example, block the user account under five seconds? And the reality says no. So, for example, if a user account was compromised. You don't have to analyze. You don't have to uh, what happens in environment. You had, you have you don't have enough time. So respond rapidly means the user account is compromised and it's 100% co compromised. First of all, block the account and give uh, don't give the attacker the chance to uh, get access to other systems and to infect other systems um, um, in the meantime. So. SOA or automation behind SOA improves the SOC productive. So the SOC analysts have time to analyze. So the first step is done. So the user account, for example, is blocked or the device is blocked or isolated, whatever. And the SOC analysts have time to analyze, okay, what happens right now and uh, have some time to uh, get a better overview about the incident. And it's really important that you keep focus on threats that matter to you so that that's uh, really important and where you have really time to, to analyze it. It makes easy to measure your SOC operations, operational efficiency, so it's, it's really important, and improves cybersecurity posture for your environment and enrich your incidents if it's required. So for example, if you have an attacker and the attacker uh, coming from a public IP address, you also have the ability to test the IP address. Is it uh, uh, from a blacklist? Is it a Tor uh, IP address and whatever? And bring that additional information into your incident. Or what you can also use, you can send this information to Microsoft Security Copilot, for example, automatically. and get the result from security copilot and bring it back to your incident and add it to, for example, to the commands. Okay, so I think it's clear that uh, it's really important to respond rapidly uh, and also to use automation to um, implement the first step, for example, isolate device, block the user account, um, revoke the user session and so on. So when we think about um, automation, so we have right now we have two different, uh, not two different, we have two different options where you can automate. So first of all is um, Microsoft XDR automation investigation. Uh, it's new, so it's implemented into the XDR environment, XDR uh, portal, and you can use use a predefined XDR automation investigation, or you can create your own XDR automation. But the really important difference between uh, XDR automation and Sentinel automation is, XDR automation is always focusing on the automation and investigation and response for Microsoft 365, for Microsoft products. When we talk about Sentinel SOA, this is the, the main focus from today, we uh, have the ability to use predefined automation playbooks, for example, uh, from Microsoft, from third party prov uh, providers, or from the community. You can also create your own automation playbooks. And this is the, the, the difference between XDR and Microsoft SUA. It's you have the ability to automate across your solutions and environments. So it's not Focusing on Microsoft 365, you can for sure uh, automate um, isolation for Defender for Endpoint uh, device, um, uh, isolation for in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. It's not a problem, you can do this. But it's also covering third party products, third party solutions. So, for example, uh, add a separate rule to your firewall. What kind of firewall do you use? And at the end, you have three different trigger types and it's really important to think about what kind of trigger types 
do you have and also um, the different option what you have with the trigger types. Okay, so the topic from today is Sentinel SOA, the automation part from Microsoft Sentinel, not the XDR automation part. It's also really important to understand and to know, but it's not the topic from today we are talking about Sentinel SOA. Okay, you have two different options where you can, uh, where you can start the automation in Microsoft Sentinel. So the first thing what you have to do is Define your automation rule. Automation rules are not really new, but it's the, the second version from the automation part. So automation rules have made a significant, uh, significant improvement in Microsoft Sentinel for security operations team to automate incident response and incident tuning. So when we think about before automation rules, you have the ability to execute and Sentinel playbook. So for example, you have Microsoft Sentinel and Microsoft Sentinel and new incident uh, is available. And what you can do is based on the analytics rule, okay, say, okay, when this happens, please execute uh, and Sentinel playbook and do what, what, what you have defined inside the Sentinel playbook. And the, the important part here is everything is covering in the Sentinel playbook. Every change, every, for example, um, uh, severity change, add comment, uh, assign the owner to the incident is always um, covering by the Sentinel playbook. The new version right now with uh, automation rules, you have the incident, the incident is, uh, is covering, you execute uh, the, the automation rule engine uh, is executing and if it's required, you can execute from the automation rule and Sentinel playbook to, for example, block the user account, isolate the device, or add a new rule to the firewall, whatever, what, 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 what you want. But the big, biggest difference here is um, you have some topics, you have, uh, you have some possibilities to cover inside the automation rules. For example, you can assign the incident to an owner, you can change the severity, you can add a tag, you can um, add a command, you can add a task and, and so on and so on. But, and this is, this is covering by the automation rule. And then if, uh, if you want to do a custom or uh, an, an additional uh, task, you can execute a playbook if it's required. A Sentinel automation rule is always um, designed by the following key components. First of all is the trigger. Uh, you have different trigger types based on an incident is created or, and this is really important, if an incident is updated, you can also execute the automation rule or if an alert is triggered. Then you can define the condition based on the incident. Is the incident uh, coming from Microsoft Defender? XDR solution or is it a custom rule or whatever and then you are defining the action. The action is what you've mentioned before, uh, assign the owner to the incident, change the severity, change the status and so on and so on or execute a Sentinel playbook. Okay, so enough about uh, Sentinel automation. Let's go to the first live demo and see what happens when we are uh, talking about Sentinel automation rules, you will get an overview about Sentinel automation rules. Uh, we will implement an automation rule and we will see uh, what kind of options do you have when you implement an automation rule. Okay, I will switch to my live environment. Okay, here we go. What you can see here, I have opened Microsoft Sentinel, so I have here my, my live demo. Uh, instance. What you, <coughs> what you can see here, I have one incident, uh, I have one new incident, it's, it's not a, no, a null uh, active incident and so on. When we scroll down, you can see here un under configuration, we have here the automation section. When we go inside the automation section, you have here three different uh, tabs. The first uh, tab is automation rule, the second tab is active playbook and the third tab is uh, playbook templates. 
Uh, first of all, we will cover automation rules. So automation rules is the first step what you have to do when it comes to uh, automation or the SOA. Uh, you have here the ability to create a new automation rule. Um, I will create now a new automation rule. And what you can see here is, first of all, we have to define the name. Automation rule, demo, ACTH. This is the name for the auto new automation rule. Then we go to the trigger. We have a different trigger type. Then we have conditions and then we have actions. The trigger is when an incident is created, the automation rule will automatically execute it. Then we have the ability when an incident is updated. So for example, a new incident is created, you will assign the incident to an owner manually and the automation rule, for example, will be executed automatically or when an alert is triggered. So in some situations you are creating an uh, analytics rules and you don't want to uh, create a new incident when it's uh, the analytics rule fill, uh, find um, uh, match uh, the conditions that what you have defined. You will only create an alert and you have here the ability when an alert is created, you want to, uh, the automation rule should be executed automatically. Okay, so in this case, when an incident is created is fine for me. Then we have the conditions, the incident provider. So if you want to uh, execute the automation rule only based on uh, Microsoft Defender XDR rules. So if something happens in Microsoft Defender for identity, Microsoft Defender for endpoint, you want to execute these automation rules, you have to select Microsoft Defender XDR. If you want to execute the automation rule only based on your custom rules, you have to select Microsoft Sentinel or maybe in the future other incident providers. In this case, in my environment, I only have these two uh, providers in place because I have Microsoft Defender XDR, the connector enabled uh, and connected to Defender XDR or Microsoft Sentinel for my customers. In this case, I want to um, execute the automation rule if something happens in Microsoft Defender XDR or also in custom rules. Then you can define or fil uh, filter it down based on analytics rules. So if you uh, want to filter on custom analytics rules, so for example, in this use case 01004, I want to execute analy uh, analytics rules only for this use case, you can select here the use case. You have the ability to add other conditions like uh, if the title from the uh, incident is based on XYZ, the description, severity, status, and so on and so on. So you have a lot of ability, you have uh, a lot of conditions here to define if the, uh, when the analytics rule or when the automation rule should be run. In this case, this is the, the default section, the default settings, and it's fine for me, everything is okay. And then we are coming to the action section. So always keep in mind, in the past, you have to uh, fulfill every, all actions in your playbooks. Right now, we have here some action options available, what you can use before you are executing a playbook. So in this case, uh, change status. So for example, I want to change the status from new to active because I'm assigning right now the action to a specified owner. So in this case, I go ahead and uh, assign it to an owner. In this case, I'm using my own account. Uh, yes, I'm using me. I'm assigning the incident to me. Uh, and then I can uh, add, and I always recommend to do this, assign a separate tag. Uh, in this case, um, I will do the name executed. So I will sign a separate tag to the incident and uh, this gives me an overview or this gives me um, the, it, it, it shows me, okay, the aut automation rule is running on this uh, incident and yeah. Then you have the ability to um, add separate task 
if it's if it's required. So it's really important. It's really interested. It's interesting to assign text to an incident, uh, which is um, a cookbook for the analyst. Okay, first of all, we have to uh, check the user account. Second, uh, um, check the the password. Third, reset the password or and revoke the session and so on and so on. So you can define your cookbook for your junior analysts, what they, have, what they have to do to analyze the incident, for example. Okay, so that's really interesting. And then uh, you can define a rule expiration uh, based on uh, the, the date, what you want to uh, define and also the time and also the priority order. The automation rule will always um, execute it by prior priority. So if you have more analytics rules or more autom automation rules, uh, which are triggered when an incident is created and also with the same conditions, it will uh, execute based on a priority list. So uh, this is priority two, I click to apply. And what you can see right now, I have here a new automation rule and the automation rule is created uh, from my user account and the status is enabled. In this case, you also have the ability to disable an, an analytic rule, uh, an automation rule, if it's required. Okay, so that's it. From the first live demo, let's go ahead and to the next topic. The next topic, um, Microsoft Sentinel playbooks. The official statement from Microsoft is a Microsoft Sentinel playbook is a set of, pro uh, set of pro procedures that you can run from Microsoft Sentinel. The playbook is built on Azure Logic Apps, which is a service that helps you automate and orchestrate tasks over various systems in your organization. So the main topics here are, it's based on Azure Logic Apps. Logic Apps are built up to design workflows. It's not built up for Microsoft Sentinel only. You can use Azure Logic App for a huge amount of different workflows. You have a lot of different trigger types and it's also really important to understand when it comes to Microsoft Sentinel, you have three different trigger types. Um, the first is an incident based trigger. The second is an entity based trigger and the third is an alert based trigger. I recommend do not use the alert based trigger because it's deprecated in March 2026 and always use incident or entity based trigger. Alert based trigger is the old functionality, the first functionality which is available. But the question here is, when should I use which trigger? So I have incident and I have entity based trigger. What are the recommendations to use these two tri different trigger types? So the answer here is really clear. Uh, an incident based trigger is, um, so my recommendation is to use it for the most incident automation scenarios. So uh, the playbook uh, received the incident object. So you have a new incident and for example, a user account is detected in Microsoft, Def uh, and, and, and device is detected in Microsoft Defender uh, for endpoint and it's malicious. You will get the alert to, uh, from Microsoft XDR to your Sentinel environment with some objects, with entities. So for example, the, the device name, uh, the device IP address and so on and so on. Um, and this incident includes both. It includes the entities and also the alerts. And what you can do right now, you can automatically execute and isolate, for example, device or the same situation when it comes to user accounts, the same situation when it comes to third party product. You always get the entities based on your analytics rules, what you have defined in your analytics rules. You get the entities and what you can do is you can use the entities and execute the playbook execute the playbook based on an incident based trigger, you will get all entities from the incident. Um, yeah, it's for the most use cases and all we think about, you execute automatically this playbook from an automation rule. When it comes to entity based trigger, it's, it's a new functionality. It's, yeah, it's, it's new. Um, the most 
that the difference between incident and entity based trigger is the execution over automation rules isn't possible at the moment. So you will you will get uh, the incident with a lot of entities inside the incident. And for example, you have an incident with more user accounts. You have an incident with more devices, device entities inside the incident. And what you want to do or what, what, what your analyst want to do is, for example, revoke the user session for exactly this user account inside the, the incident. And what you can do is you can select the entity and execute manually an entity-based trigger playbook. And this is the difference between incident and entity-based trigger. Uh, with entity-based trigger, you can uh, execute playbooks specified for separate entities, for, for, an, an, yeah, for, for exactly this entity. Um, and what's at the moment supported are entities based on an account type, DNS type, file type, host, IP address, and URL. And this is the, the, the biggest difference between incident and entity-based trigger type. Uh, in, um, um, Incident-based trigger is for the most common use cases. You can have the ability to execute it automatically. And entity-based trigger uh, is always executed manually and is focusing on a specified entity inside the incident. Okay, let me talk about logic apps. Logic apps is huge. So you have a lot of uh, different connectors available. You have a huge list for connectors for Microsoft Sentinel triggers. You also have the ability to write back a comment to create a task and so on. But you also have the ability to uh, execute other uh, to, to implement other connectors, for example, uh, Microsoft 365 or third party vendors. Always keep in mind we have two different uh, connector type. Standard connectors, yeah, it's designed to integrate with a wide range of common used services. So, for example, Microsoft 365 or Microsoft 365, Salesforce, uh, Power BI, OneDrive, um, Sentinel. Playbook uh, uh, automation accounts, Azure Functions, Logic uh, um, App Services, and so on and so on are default standard connectors. When it comes to enterprise connectors, it's designed for um, enterprise systems like SAP, IBM. Um, you can have to use enterprise connectors. And it's really important to know because the, the price is different when it comes to standard connectors which is my point of view, the most, uh, or the most scenarios are included in standard connectors, but in some situations you need enterprise systems and then you have to connect enterprise connectors and you have to pay for it. And that's the difference between standard and enterprise connectors. Okay, so enough from the theory. Let's go ahead and have a look to Microsoft Sentinel playbooks. You will get an overview about the playbooks itself. I will demonstrate the different uh, trigger types. I will show you the old one, the alert based trigger one. I recommend do not use the alert based trigger one. An incident based trigger and an entity based trigger. At the end, we will add a playbook to an automation rule and test it. And we'll see, okay, it's executed and also uh, add a separate tag to the incident. Okay, let's go to my live environment and have a look about Microsoft Centri uh, Sentinel playbooks. Okay, so here we go. What you can see here right now is the automation rule, what I've created before. And when it comes to active playbooks, you have the ability to see all playbooks in your environment. And when it comes to, okay, want to implement a new playbook, you have here the playbook templates where you can find playbooks from Microsoft or third party providers. And you can see here uh, the different trigger types. It's a Sentinel incident based trigger, it's an entity based trigger, it's an old one, uh, Sentinel alert based trigger. Okay, so let's go to the active playbooks. What you can see here right now is I have a lot of uh, custom playbooks in my environment. And what you can see here, I have also, uh, I don't have uh, only Microsoft Sentinel based triggers in my environment. I have other um, 
playbook, other playbooks with other trigger types that are not designed for Microsoft Sentinel. So you cannot execute, for example, the collect monitoring data recurrence for Broad One because it's a different trigger type. But you can see here right now, I have here my uh, Microsoft Sentinel incident, uh, automation enrich, enrich incident trigger, and this is a Sentinel incident based trigger type. But let's go ahead and um, I, will, I want to show you where you can execute manually uh, a playbook, for example. So when it comes to an incident, so we have here an incident, a new incident based on a custom analytics rules. You can see here it's uh, executed by use case 01008. An emergency account is logged in into my environment. It's really, really important. It's really, really, uh, it, it's not really good. So you have to analyze this right now. What you can do is you can go into the details to see more about the incident. And what you can see on the right side, the entities. The entities are defined inside my analytics rules. And you can see here, uh, I have my admin account. I have here my IP address. I have the destination where the user is logged in and so on and so on. When it comes to the old one, to the alert based trigger, we have to switch back to the old experience. The reason for that is we have here alerts and we have an alert based trigger. We are going to the alerts and click here on view playbooks. Once more, I do not recommend use this in your environment. This is the old one I want to show you. And when, it, when you see here the alert, you have here uh, playbook post incident to teams. This is an old um, playbook. Uh, what I can do here is uh, I'm open it in the designer. And here you can see in the logic app designer, I have here a Sentinel alert based trigger. So here you can see it's an old alert based trigger in my environment. Okay, this is the old uh, option what you have. I do not recommend to use this, so switch to the new experience. Um, and what you can do right now is you have here your incident. This is the full incident with all in entities. And when you want to execute an incident based tri trigger manually, you can do this for sure. You have to go into the incident and click here on the right side to incident actions. And what you can see here is run playbook. And when I select this option here, you can see here different trigger types, uh, different uh, playbooks, um, automate enrich incident. So this is a playbook based on an incident based trigger. So when I click here to the uh, automation rule, uh, to, the, to the playbook itself, click on edit. What you can see here, I have here now a different trigger, tri trigger type and this is a Sentinel incident based trigger. And that's the reason why, why it's showing here in the list of uh, playbooks because it's an incident based trigger type. And what I can do here right now is to execute uh, and to enrich or to execute the playbook manually. Okay, and the third thing is the entity-based trigger type. I open the incident, select one entity, for example, the admin demo acb.et, and I want to run a playbook specified to exactly this incident. And what I can do here is uh, I want to revoke the user session, for example. I will go, first of all, uh, to the, the the playbook itself. What you can see here right now inside the playbook, I have here an entity based trigger type. And this entity based trigger type is from entity type account. So this trigger or this playbook will only be shown uh, for an entity based on an entity type account. If I change this here to uh, DNS, I don't show uh, the, 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 the playbook is not showing into the list when I, when I want to execute a playbook, for example, for the user account. So I go back, select, for example, the 
the IP address, click on Run Playbook, and I have only one um, entity-based trigger type based on the IP address in, to my, in my environment. And you can see here exactly only this playbook for, specif for this specified um, uh, entity. So let's have a look to the functionality. So I have here my uh, admin account. So this is the, the, the merchant's account, why the incident is triggered. So I have here my environment. I have here my, my separate session open. And what I want to do is, as analyst, I want to run the playbook uh, and revoke the user session in this case. Click on Run. The playbook is executing. So what you can see here right now is the status. The status is, is, is right now running. Inside the playbook, I've implemented uh, different uh, connectors and one connector is I will uh, I'm sending and I'm send an email to a specified group based on the user account. So in this case is an email email sent to my user account to my separate user account where you can see I want to revoke the user session for admin at demo acp.at and was was requested by managed SOC. What should you should we do? Is it is the, the the automation task approved or rejected? So we have here the ability to select it's approved or reject. In my case, I want to approve it, confirm it, and right now the automation is running. Hopefully, it succeeded. Perfect. So it succeeded. It will take a few seconds. And in a few seconds, you will see here, I have to re-log in. So right now, try it again. And I have to reconnect, re-log in in my MIMA because my user session is revoked. And at the end, you will get an email that the request was succeeded. So it's everything is done correctly. What you can see here, when I go to the, the execution task and open the task itself, you can see here have a lot of uh, variables which are defined and what you can see here get the members based on a custom enter ID list uh, and here you can see send approval mail I'm sending here the uh, I'm sorry I'm sending here the approval mail yes for sure and I'm waiting right now I pr I'm waiting for the response and when the response is approved then I will um, block the user account or revoke the user session based on an HTTP request. In this case, I'm using the Crave API to revoke the user session. And at the end, I will also add the information to the task, uh, not to the task, I'm sorry, to the activity log. What you can see hopefully right now here, the revo uh, revoke user session was successfully. So I'm writing the information back to the incident, back to the uh, activity log from the incident to uh, inform um, the analyst, okay, everything is running, everything is running, okay. Okay, so when it comes to automation, when it comes to automatically execute, what we can do here is... Um, you have also the ability to add, to execute a playbook, for example, based on an incident-based trigger. So normally you only see here incident-based triggers. You don't see entity-based trigger playbook. And uh, what I want to use is automate and rich incident. So this playbook will add some additional information to the incident, for example, add a separate tag, uh, uh, add information about my environment and so on. So I click here on apply. And what I want to do is sign it in it again. So I'm opening here my password manager. Copy the password, add the password, click on login. Yes, it's okay. 
And normally a new incident should be created in a few minutes and you can see it in Microsoft Sentinel and what you can see in this incident is especially this automation rule is executed, uh, the status is changed from new to active, it's assigned to me, um, we will add a separate tag and execute the playbook uh, to automate enrich, uh, to an, an, uh, rich incident. Okay. So let's go back. We have to wait a few minutes. Let's go back to the presentation and come to the last section. The pricing. So when we talk about pricing for uh, SOA, so the automation rules itself, itself are totally for free. So you don't have additional charges when it comes to Microsoft Sentinel automation. It's totally for free. When it comes to Sentinel Playbook, you will pay for the actions. So one action is, for example, you have a trigger, you are defining a variable, you're defining a second variable. These are three actions and you will pay uh, 0 0.000024 euro from the European perspective uh, per action per run. The first, I guess, 5000 actions are for free. And then when it comes over 5,000 or 10,000 actions per day, um, uh, per month, I'm sorry, uh, you will have to pay for the actions. Then you have to pay for the connector types. So keep in mind, normally you have two uh, connector types, standard and enterprise, and the most uh, um, use cases are fulfilled with standard connectors. And for the standard connector, you have to pay 0 0.000118 euro per run. When it comes to enterprise connector, for example, you want to connect to an SAP or IBM system, you have to pay for the enterprise connector 0 0.00937 per execution per run. And at the end, what you have seen in, in the live demo, you have seen the, um, uh, the execution, the details for the execution, and exactly this information are stored in a separate log analytics workspace. And in this case, you have to pay for the data retention for the log analytics workspace, uh, 0 0.12 gigabyte uh, uh, euro per gigabyte per month. So what you can do is to reduce the cost, optimize the actions inside your work, uh, inside your playbook, uh, change the data retention, for example, for 90 days to seven days or what you prefer, <coughs> and then you have to uh, you, you can reduce the costs for the SOA playbooks. Um, at the end, when, it, when, when we compare Microsoft Sentinel and the SOA automation, the SOA automation is a minimum uh, type of costs, but you have to uh, think about when it comes to budgeting and so on. So it's really, really cheap uh, when it comes to playbook. So let's have a look to our live environment if the automation rule is running if, if everything has happened right now. So let's switch back to the live environment. Okay, so let's have a look to our incident. So normally I'm, I'm logged in with an uh, additional uh, user account or with an, uh, once more with the merchant's account and it should create a new incident. So in this case, I go back to the incident. You can see here I have a new incident, uh, 760. And the difference here is the same user accounts, the same entities. But when I scroll down, what I can see here right now is uh, the tag. So the automation rule was executed and the automation rule changed the owner, changed the status to active, assign it to me and execute the playbook uh, and add additional information to the playbook. So to enrich the incident, in this case, uh, the Entra ID or Asia ID uh, uh, link and the Microsoft Defender URL, URL so the specified uh, Defender URL for my environment. So you can see right now the automation rule, including the, uh, the steps inside the automation rule and also the playbook was executed successfully. So let's go back to uh, the presentation and finalize the session from today. So the recap, Microsoft Sentinel or the SOA 
for Sentinel, uh, for, uh, the SOA in Sentinel improves the SOC productivity. So because it helps you to uh, execute the first task, the first analytics task, for example, to revoke a user session, to isolate the device, to block a user account, uh, to um, add a separate rule to a firewall, uh, to give you the time for to analyze your the incident and yeah that's it's improved the SOX productivity. It also improves your cybersecurity posture and always keep in mind it's split it into two uh, different um, types. The first of all is uh, the automation rule perspective and the second one is the Sentinel playbook. The automation rule uh, will cover some tasks, some, some actions for you inside the automation rule and the Sentinel playbook will cover all other workflows or other connectors, actions for your automation um, uh, environment. There are different trigger types in automation rules and playbooks. Uh, automation rules, when an incident is created, when an incident is updated or and when an alert is only created without an incident. When it comes to playbooks, you have three different types. One, please keep in mind, it's deprecated in March 2026. This is the alert-based trigger type. And you have an incident-based and entity-based trigger type, uh, which, is, which are used for different use cases. Uh, automation rules are for free, so you don't have to pay for it. It's totally for free. Inside Microsoft Sentinel, what you have to pay for are playbooks, and this is really, really cheap. It's based on actions, it's based on connectors, and at the end, uh, uh, also um, on data retention. Okay, that's, that's it. That's it from my session. I want to say once more, thank you to uh, Asia Back to School. Also, thank you to the sponsors to uh, give us the ability to present uh, the, the, the sessions, to, pres uh, to, to, to fulfill, uh, to present the sessions at Asia Back to School. If you're interested in more, please visit my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel, connect to my LinkedIn account, everything what you want to do. That's it, that's it from my session. I hope you enjoy it. See you soon, bye.